Hello everyone. At this part, we will introduce the FAT AP based networking and uh, configuration. FAT APs are most suitable for the small set networks, such as a home network or some Soho and parts network, and so on. The reason why it's more suitable for small set network is that different from the FAT AP and AC structure, FAT AP work independently and one specific fat ap can only cover a small area so this is the reason why it's more suitable for small size networks if the, it's a large size network we should have a lot of fat aps it's difficult for us to manage them and uh, to maintain them okay after knowing the application scenario then let's see the function of it a uh, FAT AP integrates the uh, user data encryption, communication, roaming, network management functions. Since it works independently, so it should uh, uh, responsible for the uh, data forwarding and the control plan. And then let's see an example. Here, in this figure, you can find one AP is directly connected with a switch, and in this figure, you cannot find the AC. So we have actually guessed that AP is the fat AP. And in this figure, wireless STAs access the network and communicate with each other through the AP. Fat AP in this scenario serves as a relief and uh, extend the coverage of uh, wireless local area network. APs forward data from internal to external or from in external to internal devices. Okay, and if we use FAT AP, of course it has some uh, advantages, right? Because for some small size network, uh, we just need one device to build a WLAN. But at the same time, it has some disadvantages. The first is that a large number of APs need to be configured, and a large number of APs need to be managed and maintained, except that network optimization need to be performed for a large number of APs. So these disadvantages will only occur when we use FAT AP in a large size network. But if we only use one FAT AP, actually these disadvantages do not exist, right? Of course, one AP is easy to be managed, to be maintained, to be configured. This is about the networking architecture. Then let's see some basic commands when we configure the FAT AP. At this page, it shows us some commands to view APs or to check the running status of APs. First, show AP mode. Regarding to the AP mode, we have FIT AP or FAT AP. By using this command, you can check which mode we're using on this device. And next, show run. Actually, show run is um, show running configuration. Actually, it's used to check the configuration of the AP. And then show version, obviously, to check the version of the device. Show interface to check the running status of each interface on this AP. And show VLAN, of course, it's checking the VLAN we have uh, created. And uh, for example, uh, the interfaces belong to which VLAN. And then show int usage is used to check the usage of the interface. While well, since it is a wireless device, so actually it's used to check the uh, interface bandwidth utilization of the uh, interfaces on AP. And last, Show dot eleven MB SSID is used to check the SSID of the device. Okay, this is about some shoe commands, and then let's see uh, the configuration procedure of uh, FAT AP. Now we have a topology on the right. Right, a FAT AP is connected with a PoE power supply model. And let's see how to configure this FAT AP to build a wireless network. First step is to connect the devices, right? Following the guidance of this figure, we can connect 
the topology, right? We just need to connect the AP with a PoE power supply model. And the next step, log in to the AP through the console. And uh, the default password is rejected. So you should enter the password, then you can log into the device and configure it. Okay. After logging into the AP, then we should switch the mode. AP mode FAT means we are using the FAT AP mode. And at this part, you should pay attention. APs are set to feed AP mode before delivery. So by default, all the APs are feed AP, and you need to manually configure it to be a FAT one. Okay, and the next step, create an SDA virtual LAN. So create VLAN, VLAN 10. This is used for all the STAs. Okay. And uh, next is uh, configuration of DHCP. Firstly, service DHCP, we have enabled the DHCP service on this equipment, right? And uh, IP DHCP port test. So by using this command, we have created a DHCP port, and the name of this port is test. Okay, and in this port, it will contain a lot of IP addresses that can be assigned to the users. So the IP address in this port have a range. So by using this command, we can uh, limit the range network 172.16.1.0 and the mask is 255.255.255.0 okay and uh, the gateway is 172.16.1.254 okay this is uh, the configuration of the DHCP server and the next is to create a WLAN First, dot eleven WLAN one. We have created a WLAN, which ID is one, and for the WLAN one, this SSID is Rijie, and we have enabled the broadcast SSID function. After using this command, AP will broadcast the SSID so that terminals can get the SSID and access the network. Okay, last is. VLAN 10 means we are associating WM1 with VLAN 10. Okay, this is uh, step 6. And the CN, step 7. Encapsulate the STA VLAN on the RF port and associate it when with the uh, WLAN. Let's see here. Interface.11 radio 1 0. So we have entered the RF port 1. And for this RF port, the encapsulation dot one q ten means we have encapsulated this port with VLAN ten, and uh, MAC mode FAT. So the since it's a FAT AP, right? So the MAC mode is FAT, and uh, we associate it with the WLAN we have just created, right? WID one. And for another RF port, it's the same. Interface dot eleven radio two zero. Encapsulation dot one q which is ten and uh, WID one so associated with the uh, WN one. Okay, this is about the step seven and then config the upstream interface interface gigabit Ethernet zero one encapsulation dot one q ten. So for the uplink interface, we also encapsulate it with VLAN ten and uh, Next step is the manage IP interface BVI 10. So we have entered the interface BVI 10 and the IP address is 172.16.1.254. And if you still remember in the configuration of DHCP, we have set this IP address to be the gateway, right? 172.16.1.254. Okay. And there should be a root IP root 0 .0 0.0.0.0. And uh, the mask is 0 .0 0.0.0.0 and uh, the next stop is 172.16.1.254 okay this is the uh, default route firstly it's, it's a static route but it's a special static route because the destination address is 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 the mask length is 0 
right? So it's a special static route called default route. And uh, by using this route, all the traffic will be guided to the gateway 172.16.1.254. Okay, this is the basic FAT AP configuration. And then let's see another example, different from the figure we have just introduced, you can find. Here is a switch, right? Here is a switch. So let's see what's the difference between them. The first one, connect device, is, is the same, right? Following the topology here, finish the uh, connection of devices. And uh, log into the AP through the console. The pa default password is Rijie. And switch the mode to be FAT AP. AP mode, FAT AP. This is the same as uh, what we have just introduced. And then config the layer 3 switch. Actually, this is different. So let's see what we should do on the layer 3 switch. First, they create VLAN, which is VLAN 10. And int VLAN 10 means we should create a logical interface which is associated with VLAN 10. And the IP address of this logical interface is 192.168.10.1 and the mask length is 24. Okay, and then create a DHCP port patient in here. Now, the switch act as the DHCP server. This is different from the uh, last uh, figure, right? And uh, for this port, the name is VLAN 10 IP, means this port is used to assign IP addresses to all the uh, clients in VLAN 10. And then the range is here, 192.168.10.0, mask length is 24. The gateway is 10.1. And uh, then interface FA012, this is actually this is the Ethernet port, faster Ethernet port of the switch. And uh, actually this is a downstream interface on the switch. Switch access VLAN 10. So this is access port. Pay attention here. And uh, the VLAN ID is 10. And this is a configuration on the L3 switch. And the next is the configuration of AP. Actually, the configuration on AP is similar to what we uh, just introduced. So let's go through it. Firstly, VLAN 10. So we have created VLAN 10 on the AP. Then, data plan, wireless broadcast enable. By using this command, we have allowed all the RF cards to forward broadcast frames. Here you should think about it, why we should allow them to forward the broadcast frames. For example, after using these commands, all the RF interfaces here, they will broadcast uh, some frames. Of course, once the broadcast frames occur in the network, we should think about, for example, the broadcast stone, or we should think about, is there any loops? Or we should think about that, is there uh, any possibility that it could reduce the efficiency of the network, right? So normally, the broadcast function is disabled for the RF interfaces, but you should think why we should enable it here in this example. Actually, because the DHCP is enabled, and uh, in the DHCP process, there is a package called DHCP Discover, and this is a broadcast frame. So if we do not enable this function, the package will be discarded, okay? And then interface Gigabit Ethernet 01 encapsulates dot one q 10 and dot 11 WM1, create a WM1. And the SSID is rj 10 the VLAN is VLAN 10, and for the interface dot 11 radio 10 for the RF interface encapsulated with VLAN 10 that associated with WID1, and create a BVI interface 10, and the IP address is shown here, the gateway is shown here. Okay, so the procedure about the configuration of AP is the same as what we have introduced in the last example, right? 
And next, after introducing the configuration of the FAT AP, let's see two key knowledge. The first is called router on a stack. Firstly, let's see the requirements or the background of this technology. Now we have two PCs, PC1, PC2 in this figure, right? And PC1 belongs to VLAN 10, PC2 belongs to VLAN 20. So we all know that PCs in different VLANs are isolated at layer 2, right? So at layer 2, PC1 cannot communicate with PC2. But in some cases, there is a requirement that PC1, for example, I want to communicate with PC2, but we are in different VLANs. So how do we solve this problem? The first solution is called the router on a stack. And uh, in this solution, we have a router. You can see we have a router. So to solve this problem, we should create sub-interfaces. Here are two sub-interfaces. First is F00.10, and another is F00.20. Okay, this is a sub-interface, and uh, F00.10 will act as a gateway of VLAN 10. GW is a gateway of VLAN 10. And uh, F00.20 will be the GW of VLAN 20. So if PC1 want to communicate with PC2, it will send the packet to the gateway. And uh, of course, in this way, the router can receive this packet. So router has received this packet. And uh, the destination IP address, the destination IP address is uh, IP of PC2. So the router will check the routing table and find that, uh, okay, the outbound interface is uh, the sub-interface 0.20, right? So router will send out this packet through the interface and uh, send it to PC2. So in this way, PC1 can communicate with PC2 at layer 3. This is a basic solution. But let's think about it. Does it have any disadvantages? Actually, it does. Firstly, the first disadvantage is that router is needed. Because it's called router on a stack, and we should have a router in the network so that we can support the communication between PC1 and PC2, right? So, but in some small-sized networks, we can still don't find a router, right? Of course, router is expensive. And uh, next, this one is that the configuration is complex. Because firstly, we should create the sub-interface. And for each sub-interface, actually, we should uh, encapsulate it with the VLAN. For example, for the sub-interface, 0.10, which would encapsulate it with VLAN 10, and on the right, encapsulate it with VLAN 20. And uh, we should think about, for example, the ARP function for these uh, sub-interfaces. So the configuration actually is very complex. This is also the reason we seldom using it in the real network nowadays. Okay. So since if we do not use it, do we have any other solutions? Yes, of course. So let's see another solution, which is called SVI as virtual gateway. You can find in this figure, there is no router, right? Because we can use a switch SW2 to uh, support the connection between two different VLANs. And let's see what we should do. Here, a layer 3 switch is used to ensure the interconnection between different VLANs. So firstly, it should be a layer 3 switch. And uh, no router is required anymore. A virtual interface is configured for each VLAN on the L3 switch. Means that on SW2, firstly, we should create a SVI, which is associated with VLAN 10. 
and uh, another SVI will be associated with VLAN 20. Okay, so SVI 10 is a gateway of VLAN 10, and uh, SVI 20 is a gateway of VLAN 20. So in this way, firstly, um, let's see, on the switch, now it has two interfaces, which is uh, SVI 10, SVI 20. So if you check the routing table, of the SW2, you can find that there are two direct routes. One is uh, SVI 10, another is SVI 20. So this is a direct route. And uh, then let's see at the uh, data plan, the working procedure. First day, PC1 will generate a packet, right? And uh, this packet, is sent to PC2. So the destination IP is the uh, IP address of PC2. It, PC1 first they will send it to the SVI10, right, to the gateway, so that the switch can receive it. Once receiving this packet, SW2 will check the routing table. And in the routing table, it finds that, okay, there is a direct route which can match the destination IP address. So SW2 will follow in the guidance of this entry and send it to PC2. Okay. So here you can see what we should configure is to build two SVI interface and uh, set the IP address of them. It's all what we should configure. And it's more simpler than what we should do during the configuration of router on a stack. Right. This is the uh, first advantage of it. And uh, if we use this solution, routers is not required, so we can reduce some cost, All right? So this is about the second solution, SVI as virtual gateway. And you can think about these two solutions, which one you prefer. So since we see that router on a stack is um, very complex during the configuration, so let's see what we should do. To configure it. Firstly, interface FA10. This is a physical interface, right? No IP address. Since we are not using it as a gateway, so we do not need to configure the IP address of it. And if you uh, configure the IP of this interface, you should use a command no IP address to delete the IP on it. And then interface FA00.10. We have created a sub interface and the encapsulation dot one q ten. So we have encapsulated with VLAN ten, right? IP address of it is one nine two dot one sixty eight dot ten dot one mask length twenty four. And for another sub interface encapsulated with VLAN twenty and the IP address is twenty dot one while the mask length is twenty four. Okay. So this is about the configuration of the router one stack. Right. Compared with what we should do uh, if we use SVI to establish the communication between VLANs, the configuration here is complex, right? Okay, and uh, then let's see a typical application scanner wheel. Now, this is a school network, and the school builds a campus WLAN to provide the WLAN access service to both teachers and students. Well, because students and teachers have different usage time and permissions, so it's expected that students and teachers use different SSIDs to access the network. So you can find here students and the teachers. They should use different SSIDs, but we only have one AP. So actually the requirement is that one AP should uh, send out signals with different SSIDs or with multiple SSIDs. This is different from what we have just uh, introduced, right? Okay, for this project, let's analyze it first. Students and teachers are assigned to different VLANs. Students in VLAN 10, teachers in VLAN 20. 
Students and teachers use different SSIDs. One is WM1 and WM2. Of course, in WM1, we should just set the SSID of it. For example, the SSID is uh, uh, student, and for the teacher, the SSID is teacher, just like this. Okay, after analyzing the project, then let's do the configuration. Firstly, connect the device, and then log into the equipment, then change the mode to be FAT, AP FAT mode. And then create VLAN. Of course, here we have two SSIDs, so we create VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and create a WLAN, dot 11 WLAN 1, which SSID is uh, rigid test 1, associated with VLAN 10. And another WLAN, which is dot 11 WLAN 2, the SSID is rigid test 2 and uh, associated with VLAN 20. Okay. So actually, we can find if we should uh, have multiple SSIDs, we just need to repeat the configuration. Right. If we only have one SSID, so we just need to create one VLAN and uh, create one WLAN. But if we have multiple WLANs, we just need to repeat the configuration. Right. So it's easy for us to understand. We just need to master the basic configuration. And then encapsulate the VLANs for the sub-interfaces. Interface dot eleven radio one point zero point ten encapsulated with then ten and the interface dot eleven radio one zero dot twenty encapsulated with VLAN twenty. Okay, and uh, then associated WLAN one WLAN two with the main interface. So interface dot eleven radio one zero associated with WLAN one and WLAN two. Okay, this is about the uh, configuration of FAT AP. When we should uh, have multiple SSIDs. Okay, after associating the WLAN with the main interface, next we should configure the DHCP server. Firstly, enable DHCP service and uh, configure two DHCP ports. One is for the students, so we call it user time IP. Another is for the Teachers, so we call it user 20 IP. And uh, the IP address gateway is shown here. It's similar to the configuration in the basic example, right? And the last is the configuration of the AP address and the default gateway. Interface BVI 10, the IP address is 172.16.10.1, and the, this is the uh, default route. And another BVI interface, BVI 20, IP address showing here, and the default route. This is about the configuration of uh, FAT APs, if we should uh, support multiple SSID signals on one specific AP. And you, you can find that, compared with the basic example, we just need to repeat the each step right, for two times. Okay. And uh, after knowing the configuration of multiple SSIDs, then let's see if we have a layer 3 switch in this scanner wheel. So what we should do. Now the scanner wheel is similar. A school builds a campus WLAN to provide the WLAN access service to teachers and students. And because they have different requirements, so we should uh, have two signals or two different SSIDs. Okay, the requirement is the same, but different is that we have a switch here. Okay, so it's the same. Students in VLAN 10, uh, teachers in VLAN 20, they have different SSIDs, WLAN 1, WLAN 2. Okay, so let's see the configuration. First, they config the switch, enable DHCP service, right? create the VLANs, and create the gateway address. You can say create the VLAN 10, VLAN 20. For each interface, we have set the IP address, and they will be used as a gateway of uh, students and the teachers. Okay, And for the physical interface, interface F. 012 
the mode is trunk. So if this is a, actually this one, this is a trunk interface. Okay, and then create an STA virtual LAN, VLAN 10, VLAN 20, right? This is a configuration on AP. In terms of the trunk protocol on AP uplink interface, interface G01.10 encapsulated with VLAN 10, interface G01.20 encapsulated with VLAN 20. So it's similar to the uh, router over stack configuration, right? And then define SSIDs and the WLANs. So create a WLAN 1, the SSID is showing here, associated with WLAN 10, and WLAN 2, we set the SSID to be Boomman 42, and uh, the VLAN is 20. Okay. And the next, associated RF ports with the STA VLAN. So for the RF ports, interface dot 11 radio 10.10, encapsulated with VLAN 10, associated with WLAN 1. And for another one, encapsulated with VLAN 20, associated with WLAN 2. The configuration is similar, right? OK, this is step four. After knowing the configuration of um, the FAT AP, no matter we have a switch or not, the configuration is similar. And no matter how many uh, SSIDs we should uh, have, the configuration is still similar, right? Because if we should have multiple SSIDs, we just need to repeat the basic configuration, right? OK, so this is about the, the FAT AP networking and the configuration. Let's see a question here to summary these parts. Which of the following are not the advantages of SVI as a virtual gateway over the router on stack. That's it. A. Less device needed. B. The topology is simpler. C. Configuration is simpler. D. More stable network accessing. So which of them are not the advantages? Obviously here we choose D. Right, because no matter which solution we use, it will not affect the stability of the network. So, which was D. Okay, that's all for this part.